Okay, so using my sketch to inform the angle, the components I start searching for, and then I get creative. So the bison, the walrus, that's what I've kind of looked for so far, but it's spread out. So I'm gonna start making little organizational folders for my references. Makes it easier. And I'm just gonna not limit them to the kind of animal I'm using, because I'm using a dog here too, a Hungarian pulley dog but maybe to the different components. So now we think of it as a, an assembly line where this is the blueprint and I need to construct the different components. So the head, I have walrus stuff so far, the coat, I have bison stuff and dog stuff. What about the legs? Well, I went ahead and got a lot from Pixabay which goes right to downloads. Remember, Pixabay is great because they're already Creative Commons open. And my favorite thing about them is they're all good, good resolution. So these are for the legs. This is for the head and the neck. These are for the coat. So now what do I need? Maybe that white orchid stuff, or maybe the boar. Let's, let's do the boar. So I want a snout. So I'm going to go to Pixabay, just because I'm tired of scrolling through Google, trying to find things big enough. I know if there's something I like here, like this, it will be big enough. Ooh. So dirty, kind of fun. The animal kingdom is so weird. Right, so let's see some of these. So this one's not so great. That one's pretty good. I love that. This one's not, eh, it's pretty clear. It's not huge, but it's just for the nose. This one's really huge. I can make it good. All right, so now I'm gonna have the snout. I'll bring that over. Home downloads. The next, the, the orchid. I gotta admit, I don't know a whole lot about orchids, so I don't know if this would be the right call. But I like the idea of it. Something so delicate to go with something so weird and hairy. Forty three pages of orchids, so just based on your patience that you can find stuff. All right, I think I've got enough orchids for now. Like I said, about three of each is what you're hoping for. And these are for details. 
And who knows, I might use those like around the eyebrows and in other parts too. I'm gonna download them all, 4,000 by 6,000 pixels, beautiful. Notice that this is only in sharp focus on this end, these are not. So realize you know, what you're able to use and what you're not able to use. But all of these are bigger than 2,000 by 2,000 because they're on Pixabay already. Okay. So the thing I have the hardest time finding are kind of the big flippers. But I've got some big, big things to work with. So what do we do now? Well, I'm going to take my sketch and I'm going to save it because I'm going to turn this in. So I'm going to save this. And this can be the photo you take of your own sketch as a JPEG to the desktop. Command D. Okay, now this is a little different than we did with the landscape. Now I'm going to do File New in Photoshop. And I'm going to create a new page, a new document based on my sketch is your creature from head to toe with white space around it, right? On all sides, kind of like a glump. Is it horizontal or is it vertical? So we're going to go by inches here. Mine is more horizontal. So I'm going to do 14 inches wide by 11 inches tall. Portrait format by a resolution of 350 pixels per inch. Everything else the default. RGB color, 8-bit white background. Standard RGB gamma, right? So now I have an 11 by 14 canvas at 350 pixels per inch. Then I'm going to bring my sketch onto it. And your sketch, if it's from a screen grab with the, with the FaceTime camera, might not be very big. You stretch it to be big. So I'm going to stretch this now to be big within my canvas, right? And then I am going to use my guides. So now I have my creature, the sketch of my creature, my plan, my map, filling up and looking good on an 11 by 14 canvas size that is 350 pixels per inch. Then I drew guides to the corners of it, just like we did for the landscape, dragging them with the move tool from the rulers. And now I'm going to go to the background layer and say canvas size and make it 40 inches by 30 inches, just like we did for the landscape with the extension color of gray. Say OK. And now I have a little desktop where I can start bringing my references in. So first things first, the head. What head am I most excited about? I think it's this one. Bring it in. And as soon as I bring it in, look how huge that is. It's amazing. There, let me bring it in on top. Top of my sketch. Okay, I'm going to flip it horizontal. And I'm going to shrink it a little bit. And I might rotate and tilt it a little bit. And you see it's not quite right. So let me bring in another head element. Put the heads down here. So this one, not quite as big, but still big enough. You can see that's big enough for my sketch. Now, instead of just taking the whole thing and rotating it, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my lasso and I'm going to rough cut keeping a lot of overlap. And then I'm going to hit Command J. That duplicates just that part. And then I can delete the smart layer. Then I take this, I bring it in and maybe I transform it with Command T, tilt it a little bit. So I want something in between these two. Then I also have the tusks. Ah, but you see, this reference just isn't big enough. So if I make it bigger, let's see what happens. Is it in good resolution? 
Yeah, pretty good. It softened it a little bit. But for the tusk, I might be able to use that. Then again, I'm going to use my lasso, get a lot of overlap here. And then Command J to duplicate, cut that part off, move it down, rotate it. Trying to think how I'm going to use this. Maybe this gets used, you know, this way. I don't know. I'm going to have to be creative. Think about it. Okay. Keep that there for now. So first thing I'm going to do is construct the head. So I need to add to this now the snout. And that's going to help give the direction too. And the snout that's already, I mean, both of these are already kind of in the perfect place. This one seems like it's going to be the most useful. It's already about the right size. Let's just put that in. Let's see. Yeah, this one could work. I'm going to cut around it. Give me a lot of overlap. Command J. Delete the smart layer. And then I can shrink it down. It doesn't need to be that big. I can also stretch it. Remember, you can warp especially with large reference. You can kind of make it the angle you want. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Okay, I've got this snout. I like the pink there. So how can I combine these things? Let's see. Let's just try it. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut the head out loosely, lots of overlap, Command J, delete the smart layer underneath, take the bore, I'm using the move tool with uh, auto select layer turned on, and I'm going to rough cut it. like so, and then Command J that again, turn off the one behind it, transform it, and kind of bring this on. And then my, I might try with warp. like stretching one animal's skin across another animal so that the anatomy lines up. Okay, now let's go back to this crazy eye right here. I want that. Maybe I don't want it in that same place. So I'm going to take out the eye. This is all internal compositing. I'm going to duplicate it, Command J, move that up above my other layer, and then transform the eye. Maybe make it bigger, place it somewhere else. Maybe warp it a little bit, give it a slightly different shape and placement. See if the other eye is there. No. So what can I do? Well, I can take this eye. I can duplicate it, flip it, <laughs> using my transform tools, right? Shrink it, rotate it, warp it. 